Yeah, the, the, the approach to evaluating these uh, materials is a very much a step-by-step -step process. So I could not just lay out, well, what are all the steps you're going to take? Because certain steps depend on the results you get from the previous step. To start, uh, we'll look at it. It's uh, physical structure under high magnification, just ordinary microscopes and so on. And keep notes on, on what kind of uh, details we see. Uh, is there evidence of, you know, nanoengineering or, or whatever? <laughs> and then there's certain straightforward, simple things we can do, like measuring conductivity across through different surfaces and that kind of stuff. And then the next layer that we always do is to determine its ch chemical constituents. And so for that, we have X-ray fluorescence uh, analyzers, which bombard the material with uh, X-rays to excite the nuclei. And then the radiation coming off the nuclei in response uh, have certain signature lines and those get plotted out. So if it's uh, magnesium or iron or copper or zinc or whatever, you get a nice plot that runs out and you see these lines that are associated with each of the chemical elements. How accurate is that? That can be very accurate. I mean, we're, we're down to where you, you can distinguish uh, between elements that are right next to each other in the periodic table. So if there's yeah. anything unusual in there, we at least at the molecular or chemical level, we should be able to... Should be able to see it. <clears throat> okay. On the other hand, if uh, we decide, you know, may, maybe there's some subtleties or nuances there, then uh, as part of our procedure, uh, another step would be to outsource it to other laboratories that we have access to, which have even finer scale. So this initial thing is just to sort of give us the overall view. And so we say, okay, it has these chemical constituents. Uh, we'd like to determine the isotopic content uh, of those particular chemical elements. Uh, because it turns out that the signature, whether a piece of material is uh, from terrestrial sources or potentially extraterrestrial sources, you know, even including like meteorites that come in or whatever uh, can have a different signature. <laughs> so for that, we go then to, to a facility that we have access and, and contracts with here in Austin and uh, then they get measurements of the isotope ratios as compared to the expected terrestrial sample ratios. Copy. And then from that, it, dep it depends what we get. You know, if it turns out that it looks pretty terrestrial, okay, then, you know, we may stop at that point. But if it looks like it's uh, a non-terrestrial distribution, then we can look a little closer uh, to determine, okay, so you know, this, it, it could be non-terrestrial because it's, say, a meteorite. It comes mm -hmm. from outside the solar system. Or it could be non-terrestrial because it was engineered some in another solar system. So then we would go deeper steps to look for all the evidence of engineering. And then depending on what we find, um, you know, if there's layering of materials that are bonded together, you know, we go into the regular literature to determine, okay, uh, is there, are there problems bonding these kinds of materials uh -huh. together or not? So then, then, it, then it becomes like a tree. And you have all these branches to follow with regard to bonding and with regard to isotope ratios and so then at that point it's it's the data that leads us yeah. so it's it's hard to say in advance you know uh, where we where we would go with it and, i mean you might get to a certain point where we actually do experiments with irradiating material with uh, certain frequencies that have come out from uh, making measurements on, on on the material which show that it presumably has resonances at certain frequencies uh -huh. and that kind of thing. So, so it, 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 the, the number of tracks that can go down uh, can, can be very great. Right. And then the number of, uh, you, you still have a lot of choices. You can say, okay, do I want to go in the lab and make measurements on the material, radiate the material, see what kind of response we get? Or do I want to do simulation analysis in exquisite computer programs to lay down properties that we find with the material and then uh, in computer simulations uh -huh. determine what would happen if it were 
irradiated with this frequency or that frequency. So some of the investigation would not necessarily be physically in the lab, but would be with uh, simulations on computers. So, I mean, it's just, it depends. At each step, what we decide to do the next step is going to depend on what we found in the previous step.